All right, so Jade, thank you for helping out with this. We have been selling so many of our uh, spatial flats because they are one unique, nobody else has them. Yep. A real problem solver. Uh, and you can install them yourself. You don't need to be an electrician. It's the equivalent of installing speakers in a ceiling. Yep. Um, in fact, we use very low gauge speaker wire. We're gonna walk you through. We have two versions here. We have the RGBWW and the warm white. I've you never touched these. a ceiling tile in my life. Are you serious? This is the first time I put my hands on a ceiling tile. Well, you did okay. All right, here's a quick trick for measuring these. These are two by four, 24 by 48. They're a quarter inch short on each side. So if I know a quarter inch, half of a quarter inch is? Half a quarter inch is an eighth of an inch. An eighth of an inch. So all I do is grab from over here, 24 inches minus an eighth. I, I score a little line with my tape measure. You got the line there? You see that little line there? Can you see that little line there, right there? Little line, see the little line? I take my, my measuring tape, 24 inches minus an eighth, and I take the corner, I score a little dent there. I do the same thing over here. 12 inches minus an eighth, I score a little line right there. That's my center point. Didn't need to get out markers, Sharpies, I didn't need to do anything like that. Like um, here. This little Space Age uh, UFO dome, Amazon. A lot of dust from the last one. All right. It's like 40 something dollars. Don't hold me to this. We don't sell these. But I'll tell you what, once you're installing, we just did uh, 72 lights in a school theater. Um, yeah, you're going to be exhausted from cutting with a keyhole saw. So this is a, a real time saver. Line up the bit right there. Now, this is really cool because if you are uh, doing a ceiling, you know what this does, Jay? It keeps it from falling on you. Well, what else does it catch as you're drilling? It keeps the stuff that you're drilling the out. Dust. Yeah. The drywall dust. It could be easy to booger this up, so be careful, practice on a few tiles. We're done with that. Now, if you notice, we like setting these on a trash can. When you do, the piece you cut out falls in. Now, I'm gonna take this one that I prepared. Remember, I got the one with the Phoenix connector going back as a home run. I like to install these because they're so light on the ground instead of up in the ceiling. You could do whatever's easiest for you, but when you get down here, flip the ears down. Be careful, it's like a mouse trap. It will hurt if it snaps on you. Snap that into place. Now, we're gonna climb the ladder. I put this up on the ladder. Be my ladder, hold that right there. As I'm up, I've got my home run but I also got the one that's going to the next the next light. You can attach this to a rod, but we're only talking a few feet. So look, you do this, you throw it over the next one, come up, pop the spe the light, I called it a speaker, pop the light tile in, you're on to your next one, knock out your four very quickly, come back, uh, install it. Just hand me the yellow strippers out of the bag in the middle there. Yellow, yellow. yellow. All right. So, we're gonna start with the warm white. Warm white, very simple. It's a two wire install. You wanna strip back the, the black insulation. You've got two leads. You've got a brown and a blue. Brown is the common. I like to, st we strip these back. That's all I strip them back, about a quarter inch. Now, if this is the last light in your run, and I'm gonna explain it off each controller. Let, let me back up a little. This is your uh, DMX 600. Yes. It does have a mean well power supply. Anybody who knows kind of electronics, mean well are, are your better power supplies. It still has a fan, they still make noise. You're not gonna put this within the building itself. You'll put it in an electrical room, you'll put it in a utility closet, you'll put it in a sound booth, uh, uh, but relatively quiet for mm -hmm. what it's doing. and. One fan, 16 lights, instead of 16 lights with one fan each, okay? This is all or nothing, folks. 
it's all RGBWW or warm white. You cannot intermix within one controller. But of course, you can get multiple controllers and intermix your lights. Any Just not you within one controller. It's one or nothing, okay? You got four inputs. Each input can do four lights, whether it's RGBW or the warm whites. I will explain how to hook up the warm whites uh, in this first video because you do need to stagger them. It's going to give you two benefits. One benefit is you are able to set this in the RGBW mode for warm white. You have to stagger the inputs. One, it balances the draw on the power supply that's inside of it. Otherwise, you're going to overload one channel. Two, you can run it either in warm white mode or you can run it in RGBW. If you run the warm whites in RGBW, you get this benefit that you don't with the color. You can set it up to control four zones individually. So you have channel five is your dimmer, which you must bring up, it's your master dimmer. Then faders one, two, three, four, control four different zones. So you can split it up that way. You cannot do that on the RGBWs because it all works as one zone. So all 16 lights, or as many as you put on here, maximum 16, you operate as a what, one DMX address, it's still five channels, dimmer, red, green, blue, warm, white. All right, so let's start with, this is our last light in the chain. We strip both sides. Go ahead and open the wire nuts for me, Jade. Get me two uh, orange wire nuts in there. I'm an essential employee, as you can tell. I like to do this on the last one, just so this doesn't butt up to a metal uh, T-bar in your drop ceiling and nothing happens, completely isolates. Now you'll notice that there is a built-in T into these. I can wire up all my lights together like this and it will work, but it will overload the driver eventually. So please, power in, power out, connects it, and continues on, four per run. So with this T, does the signal have to go a certain direction? Oh yes. Uh, it doesn't matter which is in and which is out, but one is in and one is out. You pick which it is. These only weigh a pound and a half. And pull me uh, some 16-2, right, 18-2 right there. <clears throat> you leave the box or just pull it straight out. So as we're wiring with 18-2 wire, and honestly, that's all you need. You don't need a heavier gauge. Heavier gauge if you're running 300 feet away from this, <coughs> 300 feet or more. Otherwise, uh, 18 gauges work great. We have noticed absolutely no drop. I like to go black to the brown since it's my common. But it doesn't matter what you use as long as you remember what goes at the other end. So I just wire nut these together. You can use the orange little ones or you can use the blue. Um, both work fine. Get a good connection there. Here's why you don't need a safety. This thing, with two wires connected to each light, it won't fall. Now something I also like to do is uh, on a drop ceiling, I like to tie these off. Just it creates a strain relief. That way a wire you pull from the other side you don't end up uh, disconnecting the wire. So let's say we're running uh, six or seven feet on centers. <clears throat> As a pop a light in like this, we put it in, throw this across to the next one, cut it again the same, and we uh, continue all our connections. Four lights per run. If you are doing the RGBW, same exact thing. You're gonna cut back the shield on this, you got five wires. Uh, you could pick up sprinkler wire 18.5 at Home Depot. Uh, very expensive though. We, we can help you get this. Uh, ver I don't remember the price, but it's very affordable. It's an 18.6. You do end up with one extra conductor you don't need. But uh, So pick a cable. Since we have red, green, blue, white, and then uh, brown is common, you can cut away your black, not let it you confuse, strip it away, make your connection over here, 
Oh, it's a one-to-one. -one. Throw the cable, continue on. You're going to do this. Four lights maximum per run, per home run. And again, you want to terminate this. This will have uh, the end of your run wire net it. Do you have to? No. But uh, you don't want this to get shorted in the ceiling and cause you uh, problems. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we're, we're, this is how you want to terminate your... Uh, your warm whites. But now, black is my common, red is my uh, my positive. <clears throat> On your first run, you're gonna go common and red. You're going to go to your positive, which is, uh, in this case, positive is common. I know a lot of you are used to your common being the negative, but on this particular system, your common is positive, and every individual run is going to be your negative. Your first set of four is going like this. So you're going to go your positive common and red. On your next run... Almost the same, except you're going to you're going to skip one. The next run, you're going to go to green on your color send. I'm not going to bore you and do all four. But the point is, you're going to stagger your sends. Your first one, red, green. The next one will jump to blue, and the last one to white. Honestly, you can jump it. It doesn't matter. This can come here. This one can go here. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. The point is that you have staggered uh, your sends, so it distributes the power evenly on the circuit card in here. Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead. <clears throat> For uh, those of you who don't know, a Phoenix connector, it just has these screws in the top of it. I didn't know this. And you put the wire in, you loosen it up. Like he said, you put the wire in. That screw clamps down on that wire, and it holds it in place. And so that's what makes the connection that goes into the front of this. So once I wire it up, I mean, everything you want to do as you go to make sure you don't have to come back and do it again, mm -hmm. pull on it. Yeah. I going to tell you what we do, but the discre at your discretion. We like to wire these hot. You can't get shocked. It's low voltage. We actually wire them in our hands. Just be careful. What, I, what we do when we wire them hot, it lets us know that we did our job correctly. The light turns on as we're going. But wait a minute. You have one that's going to be hot going. So before you connect this to the out of this light right here, before you connect it here, this is what we always do. You strip this one back. This is going to go to the next light, but you don't have that next light installed yet. So I strip it, I get it ready. I put the wire nuts on here. And remember, this is still dead. It's not connected. Now I go back to my light that is lit up. This light is on. It's shining good. I like it. I make my connections here. Now this wire is hot but it's been protected and isolated. Now we throw across to the next light. <clears throat> when I go to the next light, I start first on my, on my next run. I wire that up. Sorry, look at this. Messy. I wire that up to do my connection. Remember, it's, this light is not on yet. I throw that cable to the next light. Now I connect this to the previous. As soon as I connect this, now I've got two lights that are on. My wire is hot, ready for the next one, and it is ready to go because that wire has already been stripped back, has the wire nuts, and this goes really, really fast when you do it that way. And you don't have to go back if you're setting up scaffolding or high ladders. Now, uh, something Jade always likes me to remind you guys, what's the average height for these? 15 feet. 15 feet. This is not to go in a 30-foot ceiling. Uh, the school we did was 26, and it was quite effective, but doubled up. Yeah, we went about six feet on centers there, and it's beautiful. 
but if it was a church or a classroom itself, you may want it to be a little bit brighter than that accomplished. And that's just because of the height. Mm -hmm. The dispersion is, is so great at that height that you lose intensity. <coughs> um, but it will work. Mm -hmm. That's why we offer a demo program. Look up our demo program. It lets you try this out before you commit to buying the, the whole shebang. Um, also, uh, so th this works really well for anywhere from eight foot ceilings to 14, 15 feet, even 16 foot centers. Mm -hmm. uh, ceilings. For, ceilings. How close together? Well, we want you to get the demos so you could hook them up and see what is going to work for you. It doesn't matter what Photometric says. It really doesn't. We've seen the best laid plans. Somebody gets in there and it's too dark. And yeah. it's subjective. It's maybe the colors of the walls are Carpet. dark. The car oh, yeah. Or dark ceiling. It Test them out. Figure out at what height. You know what we like to do is put one in. Uh, and you don't have to actually cut or do any damage. You can just tie this up to whatever, a little hook, and let it hang, because it doesn't weigh anything, just to get a test. 80 degree dispersion lens. What happens when we light a room up with this is you look across the room and you see no artifacts. Smooth. Smooth. You don't see where one light begins, the other one ends. If you do a video in your building, the camera loves it because it is absolutely soft and even everywhere. It is a good look. Uh, take a look at some of these pictures. Two 20 amp circuits. And we just yep. went back and added more lights in the wings. We added a total of 10 lights added those and we're still on two 20 amp circuits for the entire building the energy savings enormous enormous you will see the savings first year should pay for these lights uh it is so tremendous and the light output is absolutely gorgeous and again uh, as far as i know we're the only ones that have a low voltage uh architectural house lighting yep. system installs like a speaker low voltage you won't get shocked you don't need to pay an electrician unless your area requires a licensed electrician to run low voltage, in which case, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Again, this is really easy for your common handyman. This is not for, uh, for someone who never does anything. I can do this, do. and I'm not an installer. Yeah. This is for anybody you have in your facility. Uh, they know how to climb up a ladder. Can climb up a ladder. This feels comfortable stripping wires, you know. They can install this, save you a ton of money. The most common call I get with people who think there's a problem is that they're turning up faders one, two, three, and four, red, green, blue, and white. They don't turn up fader five, which is actually the master dimmer. That has to be up or nothing's gonna happen. Yeah, and and we've had that so many times. And if that's the worst problem somebody yeah. encounters in life, life is good. Within two minutes, you're up and running. Yep. And this is just an Edison plug, just plugs into an outlet. How many amps does this draw? Oh, you caught me on the amps. It's 600 watts. You can uh, you could plug, because it's 600 watts, but you're never drawing 600 watts, mm -hmm. we successfully have used uh, four of these on one 20 amp circuit. Okay. Uh, if you want to go by elect electrical ratings, three, because a 20 amp circuit is 2,400 watts, but so you're you have to go at 80%. Yeah and that's like 1920, something like that. So you always want to go 80% of what something's rated. So if you want to stay within rating, three of these on a 20 amp circuit, okay. do the math, three of these, one 20 amp circuit, how many lights? 32, uh, 48. 48. 48 Sorry. lights. I haven't had enough coffee yet. <laughs> to 120 amp, we'll get coffee right after this. <laughs> one 20 amp circuit, 48 lights. Where else can you do that? Very yeah. bright, very even lights. Your electrical savings will be huge. Each one of these draws a maximum of 30 watts. 30 watts each. Compared to your oh. lights that you have in the ceiling now, which are anywhere from 250 <clears throat> to 500 watts. Because they're DC run, operational, 24-7. But you have this yeah. on, it's been on all day. You can no put heat. it on your face. 
it'll feel good. It will not burn you. It never gets so hot to the touch that it hurts. Uh, just warm. Mm -hmm. And, oh, another thing I love about these, there is nothing that moves inside of these at all. Nothing to break. Extremely rugged. We've never had a failure. Yep. Knock on wood. <laughs> um, anyway, that's it on this. Can you, you think you can install it? I could install it right now. Okay. Is there a setup in here for uh, if I'm doing the RGBW or I'm doing warm white, do I have to change anything inside of this? Yes. There are two settings. This is either an RGBW or warm white. It's written in English on the touch screen, so you'll know what it's set up for. You had asked earlier, you mentioned earlier, if you set it up as RGBW for the warm white, you have to run it as a five channel, five, channel five being your dimmer and four zones of warm white. You have to run it as a RGBW for the color, which is always a five channel DMX, handle zones for that with different units. So if you have, uh, you have three of these, mm -hmm. all on 120 amp circuit, I repeat again, 48 lights, but you want three zones, you would address this to one, the next one to six, and the next one to 11. You want to stagger five channel increments, just like any DMX light. Uh, and that way you have three zones of control. Okay? Awesome. <clears throat> and I think we're good and we're out.